Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and thank you for joining me for another video. There have been a lot of flat earthers recently in my comments trying to argue that the globe couldn't possibly be real because the idea of it spinning at a thousand miles an hour whilst orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles an hour in a solar system that's traveling 490,000 miles an hour through space is ridiculous. That we'd all be flung off into space when in reality we don't feel any movement. The key thing to understand with this is that we don't feel speed. We feel changes in force, uh, like acceleration and deceleration. If you've ever been on a plane, you will know that during takeoff, you get thrown back in your chair as the plane starts accelerating. At the point that the plane lifts off the ground, you're usually traveling around 150 to 170 miles an hour. When it leaves the ground, you feel the chair pushing up into you as you're being lifted up. All of that are forces that we can feel. But once the plane is up and cruising, you're at 35,000 feet. You're traveling almost 600 miles an hour, which is more than three times faster than you were going during takeoff. And if you've got, say, the window blinds down, you've got your headphones on, you're watching a film, there is pretty much nothing telling your body whether you are traveling at almost the speed of sound, seven miles in the air, or if you're lounging on your sofa in your living room. The only times that your body actually senses movement is if the plane's movement starts to change from its smooth cruising, such as turbulence. Those are then forces acting upon you, which is what you feel. Or if you look out of the window, you can see everything's moving, which gives you a frame of reference to know that one of you is moving. Your head has to fill in the blanks of which one of you is moving because it knows you're on a plane. And whilst you're lounging back during this cruising, you could easily pour yourself a drink. The liquid doesn't get flung off to the back of the plane, despite the fact that you're moving at 600 miles an hour. If you'd poured the drink prior to takeoff, then the liquid would have been thrown back during takeoff because of the force of acceleration. But at cruising altitude, everything in the plane is moving at the same speed. You, the glass, the liquid, the air around you, all are traveling together, so there's no external forces at play. This puts you in an inertial reference frame. But if you decided to, say, pop out onto the wing to pour yourself a drink, let's say hypothetically you've enabled cheats and put god mode on for this, if you tried pouring a drink while standing on the wing, you, the glass, and the liquid would all be moving at the same speed, but the outside air wouldn't. So the force of drag from the air would cause the liquid to fly backwards on its journey between the container and the glass. So we don't feel Earth moving through space because it's a single contained system. Us, the oceans, the air are all moving at the same speed, just like the people the drinks in the air on a plane. On the topic of reference frames, some people have questioned if the Earth is moving at 490,000 miles an hour, why, when Artemis 1 was said to be traveling only 24,000 miles an hour, did it not disappear off into space? Now, this comes down to what reference frame is being used for measuring the speed in terms of distance over time. The Earth's 490,000 miles an hour is in terms of distance traveled in absolute space, whereas for Artemis, it's being measured as its speed relative to the Earth and how fast it is traveling away from Earth. We can again liken this to being on a plane. The average human walking speed is about three miles per hour. Now, if you're sat on a plane flying 600 miles an hour, you can get up and you could walk to the toilet at the front of the plane. In relation to the plane, you're walking at three miles an hour. But in relation to the earth, you are now traveling at 603 miles an hour because you're, you're moving forwards three miles an hour faster than the plane is. When you're walking back to your seat, you're still walking at three miles an hour relative to the plane, but relative to the Earth, you're now covering its surface three miles an hour slower than the plane is. So you're actually now traveling at 597 miles an hour. For Artemis, the 24,000 miles an hour figure is its speed relative to Earth. If you were floating at a fixed point in space as the Earth, the Moon, and Artemis 1 flew past you, you would see the Earth moving at 490,000 miles an hour. If the Moon was ahead of the Earth in its orbit, Artemis would be flying in the same direction that the Earth's traveling, but it would be going 24,000 miles an hour faster, so would be traveling at around 514,000 miles an hour. If the Moon was behind the Earth in its orbit, then Artemis 1 
to you would still be traveling in the same direction as the Earth, but it would be slowing itself down to 466,000 miles an hour. And people then claim, well, if we're moving through space at that speed, we should be able to see it. Why can't we see it with our eyes? And again, this falls down to reference frames. For us to see that we're moving, we need a frame of reference to measure against, such as looking out of the window on a plane. As I mentioned earlier, at takeoff, you're only traveling about one third of the speed that you do when you're up and cruising, but everything flies past the window much faster because you're nearer to the ground, so everything's much closer. As you get further away from an object, it remains in your vision for much longer, which creates the impression that it's moving much slower. On Earth, we don't have any large reference frames to give us that impression that we're moving, because the objects that could offer it are so far away, it's hard to distinguish with the naked eye if it's us, them, or both that are moving. In fact, my favorite analogy to represent how much we need a frame of reference to understand our movement and why we don't feel anything is zero gravity parabolic flights, aka the vomit comet. You've probably seen these before, but when the people inside start floating up, it doesn't look like they're moving. In reality, not only are they moving a few hundred miles per hour horizontally, they're actually still rising up away from the Earth. The plane is merely slowing its rate of climb fractionally slower than the people inside, but the plane is the only frame of reference that you have, so it feels like the people are floating, which is demonstrated perfectly in this Tom Scott video. Now, let's address the spinning around our axis and orbiting the sun. This often gets likened to being on a merry-go-round, and that if a merry-go-round was spinning at a thousand miles an hour, we'd be flung clean off it, so why aren't we thrown off the Earth? This comes down to centrifugal force, which is the outward force exerted on an object as it's spinning around, like a giant human centrifuge that's used to train pilots and astronauts by creating huge g-forces. But none of these are measured in linear speeds like miles per hour. They're instead measured in angular speeds like revolutions per minute. A giant centrifuge machine spins upwards of 50 revolutions per minute. That's almost once per second, whereas it takes Earth 24 hours to spin once. In the time it takes the Earth to complete one rotation, a centrifuge would have spun 72,000 times. If you were in a centrifuge that took 24 hours to complete one rotation, you wouldn't know it was moving. But some people still argue the point that, ignoring the RPM, a thousand miles an hour is still so fast, we shouldn't be able to stay on a globe. But if you look at the formula for calculating centrifugal force, there are three factors in it. The mass of the object that is being spun, i.e. you, the velocity with which it's moving, so let's say a thousand miles per hour, and then the radius that it is being spun around, which in the case of the globe is almost 4,000 miles. The centrifugal force being exerted on us is only two and a half newtons. You'd have to turn a merry-go-round less than one and a half rotations each minute to feel the same level of centrifugal force that we do on Earth. Whereas the centripetal force, which is the inward force that pulls an object towards the center, in Earth's case, gravity, is 9.8 newtons per kilo. So if a human weighs 80 kilos, then there would be 780 newtons of force pulling you down. Now, you might be questioning, if Earth's gravity is so much stronger than the centrifugal force, why aren't we being squashed into the floor? Simple answer is, we are. But because it's the only environment that we've ever experienced, our bodies don't know anything different. This is just what we deem as normal. Similar to how we're so used to the air pressure where we live, that if we travel to places that are of very different elevations, we can feel the effects on our bodies, but to the people living there, that's just what they're used to. And that is going to draw this video to a close. As always, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can find links to my Patreon and Amazon affiliates below. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.